Hello there, guys. Welcome to episode 7 of How to Program in C++. Today, we're going to be going over some beginnings on control structures, more specifically conditional structures, and also a little bit more on operators, and more specifically, relational and equality operators. Now, what is all this jargon that I've just thrown at your face? Well, basically I'm talking about if statements and else statements. What do these allow you to do? Well, they allow you to check whether a condition is true, and if that condition is true, then you can execute a statement. If that condition is not true, then you can completely ignore that statement and keep moving. What this allows you to do is make programs that are no longer just linear sets of instructions one after another. It's more like a kind of forking path which the user can take many different routes through your program. And that is kind of the basis for all programs. Uh, and there's one other important component of structuring a program, which is loops, but we'll get to that next time, maybe. Maybe not. I have some more stuff to go on this, but very soon we'll get to loops. So, let's get started. Uh, let's first give ourselves a value to compare. Because when we're using if statements, generally you're going to be comparing against a variable that already exists, rather than a constant number or a literal constant as we went over before. So, uh, let's make ourselves a variable. And I'm going to make an integer, and I'm going to call it value, and I'm going to set it equal to 6, and then semicolon. So, say you want to check if this value is in fact equal to 6, and you only want to run this bit of code if, if that value is equal to 6. Well, the way you do that is by using the if statement. So, Type if and then open bracket, and within these two curl, these little brackets here is where you put your condition that has to be true in order to execute the following line of code. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be using the equal to operator, which is a new operator that we haven't gone over. Uh, what this does is, well, let's first write the line and then I'll explain exactly how it works. So within these brackets, write value equals equals, which is the equal to operator, and then 6. So, how does this condition work? Well, basically, it gets the value, and it's and in this case it is set to 6, and it says, is 6 equal to 6? And if it is equal to 6, then it will, the if, will, well, the condition will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Uh, these could also be labeled as 1 or 0, 1 being true and 0 being false. So that's how the equal to operator, what it outputs. It either outputs a 1 or a 0, aka a true or a false. So in this case, this should be true. So, next thing to do is you do not add a semicolon straight after this if. Before you do that, you have to enter in the statement. If I was to just put a semicolon in here, then it would assume that I don't want to do anything if this is true. Or false. This will just do absolutely nothing. If I add C out, uh, I need to use the namespace, because we haven't declared that we're using it. C out, and stream in value is equal to 6. Yeah, we'll go with that. 6. And I'll add an end line just for that. If I were to do this, then regardless of whether value is actually equal to 6, this will this line will execute anyway. Let's just demonstrate that. I mean, this is a bad demonstration. Let's change that equal to 8, just to show off. This will indeed execute regardless. Um, the way to make it only execute if this statement or condition is true is by taking away the semicolon. Because, and we'll move this back just for visual reasons, the way the if works is if the condition is true then it will execute the statement that is directly after this if. Uh, and, this, and this has to be before any semicolon. So basically the next statement uh, before a semicolon. And in this case the statement is value is equal to 6, so let's 
compile and run this and value is indeed equal to six. But what if I change this to eight? Well, now, as you can see, the statement directly after the if has just been completely ignored. It will be like, it won't give me any output. Uh, but that's not very user friendly, is it? So let's, let's learn about another bit of conditional structure. Uh, and that is the else statement. Else is is written just like that, and it works exactly the same way that an if works, except from there's no condition. Um, the else has to come directly after the ifs statement. So uh, in this case, it has to come ex directly after this C out statement. Um, Otherwise it won't work. I mean, of course, ignoring white space, you could have this else anywhere you want. But it works in the same way in that you do not put a semicolon straight after the else, you put your statement straight after the else. So in this case, C out uh, value is not equal to six. And then I will stream in the SCD and line constant. Good, okay. Now, let's try and run this. And it says value is not equal to six, even though value is equal to six. Let's change this around a bit. Let's check if value is equal to six and then change value to something like nine, just so we can say the value is not actually equal to six. Let's run it. And it says value is not equal to six. What if value is equal to six? Well, then value is equal to six. Fantastic. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, what happens if you want to enter in a bunch of lines of code after your if? Well, let's take out this else just for now, just to simplify things. Well, the way you do this is by using a compound statement or a block. Uh, a compound statement or block is a group of statements all together. Now, let's just take out this if for now, just so I can demonstrate completely. A compound statement is just two curly brace brackets, an opening one and a closing one, and then all the statements within this, these two curly brace brackets are part of the compound statement. So if I was to add C out hello world, and then add another C out, um, this is a compound pound statement. And then I will end the line and semicolon. This is not declared the namespace, so I better go put std in front of all these things. I should have declared the namespace for this. Save it. And you won't notice anything when we run this uh, because although it is a combined statement, that doesn't really mean anything when there's no conditions attached. So running this will just run both the lines, just the same way it would if this was not part of a compound statement. But the power that this gives you is you can put an if in here. So if value is equal to six, then it will do all this. Now notice there is no semicolon at the end of these brackets. Uh, that is just a syntax thing. You do not put a semicolon at the end here. I wonder what would happen if you did it. I don't think it will cause you any errors. Nope, it won't cause you, cause you any errors, but it is unnecessary. So you can run it and it will still work like this. So as you can see, it is working. If value is equal to six, then execute both these statements instead of just the one. And as you can see, if we say is value equal to eight, it won't execute either of them. So that allows you to group a bunch of statements together. You can do a whole lot of things and then you can use else the exact same way that you would before, except from this time it is after the closing bracket rather than the semicolon of the last line. And for the else, you can also do this block statement. Uh, you can do this anywhere, uh, but these are the more likely locations for this. And let's see out. Uh, Value is not equal to six. Uh, that is a shame. Semicolon. And let's add an end line just for reading purposes. Run that, and as you can see, value is not equal to six. That is a shame! Exclamation mark. So, 
Now we know how to do all that. Let's talk about a few more of these equality operators or relational operators just so you can do a few more things with this. So first of all I'm just gonna get rid of some of this rubbish that we've already written uh, just so we can have an easy way of knowing when something comes out true and something comes out false. So like this. I'm also gonna remove these brackets and in this case, I'm gonna keep my tabbing like this because although it's kind of up to you, some people prefer to put their statement directly after the if, some people like to put it on the following line, as long as there isn't a semicolon between the if statement and the statement that you want to execute, you're fine. It will execute fine. So you could even do this, but that, let's not do that. Let's promise ourselves we won't do that. Let's just check. And yes, this, will, this condition comes out false. Okay. So let's get on to those extra relational operators that I was talking about. First things first, what if you want to know uh, if the value is not equal to something? You want to know if it's any value but the one you specify. Well, that's easy. Just put a exclamation mark for the first equal sign. So it's exclamation mark equals is the operator and it's called not equal to. Very simple. Um, and in this case, if this condition, if value is not equal to 8, then the condition is true, otherwise it is false. So if value is not equal to 8, then this if statement will execute the following statement. Otherwise, the else will occur and this statement will be executed. So value is equal to 8, so it should turn out true. Excellent. And if we were to actually set value to 8, then it should come out false. Yes, indeed. Okay, that's one for you. Uh, I'm going to go through quite a few of these quite quickly, so uh, I advise you to either look over this a couple of times or just practice around with um, these operators after I've given them to you. Experiment and have fun with them. Uh, next thing, let's go over the greater than uh, operator. So you want to find out if a value is larger than another value. How would you do that? Well, in this case, you use the greater than operator, which is just an arrow pointing to the right. Uh, this says, if value is larger than 8, then this should be true. Now, in this case, our value is set to 8, but that is not larger than 8, so this will come out false. There we go. If we make our value somewhere way smaller, like 4, then it's false. Uh, what if we make it larger than 12? So 12 is way larger than 8. We execute this and it comes out true. Fantastic. Now, one thing I want to quickly throw in here whilst we're moving along here. You don't necessarily have to compare a variable against a constant. You could compare two variables. So in this case, I'm going to make value 2. I'm going to set that equal to 8 or we'll just go 9 just to change it up a little bit. Now you could put value 2 in here and it would work exactly the same way. It returns true because value is larger than value 2. Uh, the order does matter so make sure you get it the right way around for your state for your condition. Um, you can also if you want, not that this is done very often, compare to uh, literal constants. So just numbers that you've entered in yourself. Um, in this case, it says if 12 is larger than 14, which is never going to be true, so it's always going to return false. So it's not much of a condition if it's just something that will always be the same and it's kind of pointless, but it is something you can do. Okay, getting back to these operators that I am teaching you. Let's put value back in there, gonna get rid of value too. Next one is very simple, it's basically the same thing but the opposite way around, less than. And as you've probably guessed, it's an arrow pointing to the left. And then I'll type in uh, less than... 6. In this case, uh, value is larger than 6, so it should be false. It is false. Uh, let's make this way smaller, so value equals 4, and it returns true. Easy peasy. So there's two more that I want to go over really quickly, and these are very simple because they're almost the exact same as the two previous we've just gone over, but with one slight addition. Uh, let's change value back to 6, and as we discussed earlier, if value is equal to 6 and we check if value is less than 6, then it will return false. What if you want to check if 
it, the value is less than or equal to six, well, you can use the less than or equal to operator, which is just the less than sign followed by an equals. And we'll run that, and now it will return true. And it will still work the same way, so if we make value smaller, then it will still return true. And if we make it larger, it will still return false. It just changes it so that if the number is equal, the numbers are equal, then it will still return true. Okay, so the same thing applies with greater than. It's the exact same concept, but the other way. I'll just test that quickly just so you can see. Yes, indeed, it doesn't return true. Very simple. Now, you may find it difficult to remember in which order these go, because it is vitally important. It will not work if you put equals and then greater than. It will just bug out. It'll be like, I can't compile this. This isn't code. <laughs> so make sure you got those the right way around. Just try and get it into your head that the, the, first, the second symbol will always be the equal sign in this kind of one condition or equal to st type operator. Um, I try and remember it in your head. When I, when I say greater than or equal to, I am following the way that this is laid out in the operator's code as well. Uh, so try and remember it as greater than or equal to rather than equal to or greater than or something silly like that. Okay, sorry this episode is running so long. I did not anticipate this taking as much time as it has. I'm just going over things very methodically and slow to try and make things as clear as possible. Um, I'm so sorry about that, but we're going to go over one more thing really quickly, and that is just the combination of else and if. So if you want to check if something is, if a condition is true, and if that condition is not true, then perform an else, but that else should also check another condition if it's true. I know this is very complicated to verbalize, but when you see it in the code, it will be much simpler. Uh, you can you can do this uh, just by adding another if in. And where do you put that if? Well, you put the if directly after the else. So the, just think of it as else if. Um, they're actually two separate statements, and it 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 works the way you would expect it to. But some just so that you know for future sake that this is the case. Um, so if value is a larger than or equal to six, then it does this. Otherwise, it will check if value is larger than 3, and if so, then it will return value is larger than 3. So, let's give that a try. Let's set value, we'll keep value on 6 right now just to show that the else if will not be executed. See, it's still true. Now let's set that to 3, because 3 is less than or equal to 6. Uh, well, it is less than 6, and 3 is also le not larger than 3. So, let's go. And as you can see, it has executed absolutely nothing. Um, make that 4, and it executes the value is larger than 3. Uh, but it, let's put it back to 3 quickly so we can add in an extra elf else. You can layer as many of these as you want. So uh, you could have as many else ifs in a row as you wish. Uh, it gets a bit messy if you have too many, but we'll, I'll just demonstrate this quickly. STD, C out. Both of those conditions returned false. And, and that line. And go, uh, both of those conditions returned false. Because both this if and that if returned false. As I was mentioning just a few seconds ago, you could do another else if value is larger than 2. And then SEC out. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, semicolon. And then run this. And it will put out that blah, blah, blah. Um, if we put this down lower than 3, then it will execute those both the both of our, those conditions returned false statement down here. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. Sorry this video is so mammothly long. I did not intend for it to be this long. I know it can get a bit intimidating when there's such long videos ahead of you. I don't know what it is. It's just a psychological thing, I guess. But... Next time, we will continue on with this. We'll learn a little bit more about ifs, I believe. Although I can't tell you for sure. We'll see what happens. Okay, see you guys next time when we will learn more C++.